Military officials say U.S. Marines and Afghan soldiers are now occupying a majority of Marja. That's a Taliban stronghold. According to Afghan officials, at least 27 insurgents have been killed in the offensive. Well, joining us now is Florida Senator George Lemieux. He is uh, just back from Haiti, but he also visited Afghanistan last October and met with General Stanley McChrystal. Senator, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. All right, so you were in Afghanistan last October. Um, what did you see then, and what do you make of the offensive and how we've moved forward since then? Well, I think what we're seeing with this offensive is the carrying through of the plans that General McChrystal put forward to the president. And that was not just to go out and kill the terrorists, but to go into these areas and clear them and hold them so that the Afghan soldiers and the Afghan government can come in and ensure some stability. The problem that we've had in the past is we would go in and kill the bad guys and leave, and the Taliban would just go right back where they were. So I think this is the, the first step of this offensive. It's the beginning of the new troops that have been put on the field, the 30,000 that the president called for, and it sounds like we're having some success. How big of a turning point do you think it is uh, for the Afghan people and for the international community to see that they're taking the lead in so much of this operation? Oh, I think it's very important, and that's why we're training with the Afghan soldiers. We're bringing the Afghan soldiers with us. They're fighting side by side with our American soldiers and eventually you know it's their country and they're gonna have to defend their country but I got to see some of the Afghan commandos when I was in uh, Afghanistan the elite forces and they're doing great work and they're, you're seeing a lot of progress so I think that this counterinsurgency strategy which they're starting in the Helmand province uh, is hopefully the beginning of a good thing. All right, now we mentioned you had been in Haiti recently, uh, part of the first congressional delegation, I believe, there since the massive earthquake. Uh, I think we have some of your pictures to show as well. Tell us about what you saw there. Well, it's, it's a hard uh, experience to go through, and we were just there for a short period of time. Uh, we were there on the one month anniversary, realized that they think now 230,000 people died in the earthquake. Uh, we went by uh, the buildings, the old cathedral, where the only thing that was really kind of still standing amazingly was the cross. And it looked like a war zone. It looked like you had been where bombs had been dropping and very difficult situation. We went uh, to the Gesco Field Hospital where a lot of good work by volunteer doctors from America and nurses are there, a lot of them from Florida, uh, helping uh, these uh, Haitians through a very difficult time. But there's a long road ahead for the Haitian people. We met with the president and the prime minister and the other ministers. They, they're not even in their capital building, which also fell down. They've got an election coming up and that building collapse and all the people who were to hold the election died. So they've got some very difficult steps to go forward. We need to see a plan from the Haitian people. They're going to bring forward one, I'm told, in March. Uh, and then we're going to have to rally around and continue to help uh, or there's going to be more devastation, especially as the rains come. I mean, your pictures are amazing. You describe it as a war zone. That's exactly what it looks like from what you just saw. Uh, how do we as Americans move forward with helping them without being seen of crossing the line of being too involved? Well, we have to keep sending money, and the American people have been extremely generous. And I can tell you that uh, the president and the prime minister were very grateful to the American people. They know that America has reached out with its hearts and with its wallets to help uh, the Haitian people, and they were very appreciative. We've got a huge Haitian population in Florida, as you know, almost 250,000 uh, uh, Haitian Americans who've also been very helpful. But there's got to be a plan. And what I said to the president was, you know, great cities have been formed after great disasters. San Francisco, Chicago, London, all did better in a way because you could do things you couldn't do otherwise after they had their natural disasters. Haiti needs a plan now. We can't just put it back the way it was. It's got to have a five-year plan, a ten-year plan to rebuild the city, actually to rebuild Haiti, get people out of this city center in Port-au-Prince. It's going to take a lot of work and it's going to take a lot of investment and we're going to need to make sure that the money that our government put, puts forward, the taxpayers' dollars, because I know what we will continue to do that, that there's some performance measures and some accountability. All right, very quickly, we have a short time left, but i got to ask you, um, you are not running for re-election for the seat you now hold. Uh, there is a big Republican showdown going on uh, back in Florida between your former boss, the right. governor, Charlie Crist, and a challenger is the former uh, Florida Speaker of the House, uh, Marco Rubio there. Uh, one of those two probably will match up then against uh, Congressman Kendrick Meek. Uh, it's been a very expensive, very spirited race. The polls have tightened on the Republican side. What do you make of it? Well, it's a, it's a good exchange of ideas between these two men. I've worked with both of them. I work for Charlie Crist as his chief of staff. I work with Marco Rubio when he was Speaker of the House. Uh, you know, I'm a partisan and a fan of Charlie Crist. I think he's done a great job as governor. He's cut taxes. It's, we have the lowest crime rate we've had in nearly 40 years. Uh, he's done a lot to try to help in a very difficult time when Florida's suffering. You know, we've got nearly 12% unemployment, and he's out there trying to focus on creating jobs. Uh, but it's going to be a good contest, and I think it'll come down to, uh, if not to the wire, close to the wire. 
Uh, at the end, I think Charlie Crist will win, but I think it'll be a very good race. We'll be watching very closely. Senator George Lemieux from my home state, great to have you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much, and happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you.